We're getting our closest look now at the aftermath of this house where everything went down yesterday. You can see two men in hazmat suits going in right now. Look at the couch poking out of the front window here. The suspect barricaded himself inside this house. It took police five hours before they finally decided, you know what, he's not coming out peacefully. We're going to go in ourselves. This started as a SWAT situation, a standoff that lasted for hours but then turned into a crime scene. You can see over my shoulder here the house where the man was held up. At the beginning of the year, lawmakers made it clear that the roads we drive on every day are a top priority for 2017. The first Denver post office was right here, one of the first banks, a number of hotels. Then in the 50s and 60s, things went downhill. A lot of homeless lived here, so the city's revitalization plan was to bulldoze everything but the buildings still stand. You know, you're lucky to live in an area like Castle Pines. It's gorgeous, but there is one downfall. You're higher up, and that means when snow falls this late in the season, this happens. Look at all these trees lining this street. I'm going to cross over. You can also see this big tree here that was just almost destroyed, honestly. One, two, three, four. I see six branches that fell off. Holy cow. I got the uh, hood on. Do I look like the emperor from Star Wars? Probably a little bit. The snowflakes, they're huge coming down. It's a good storm in the middle of May. I'll step out, show you what's going on on I-70. You can hardly see the cars. Visibility is a, a big problem right now. Wait a minute, you two. We've been working all day. You guys are sightseeing? <laughs> oh, no, no, there, there was a lot of work involved in this, there but was. we wanted to give our viewers a different view yeah, of San Francisco. Take a look at this shot. It's gorgeous. Eric, what's down there? You can see the ferry building down there. That's the center, the hub of Super Bowl City. But yeah, we decided to get out of that hoopla and take some steps up to Koi Tower. A lot of steps. Yeah. Oh, boy. Ooh. <laughs> oh, gee. See these hips? It's all, guys, it's all about the hips. You know what I mean? It's all about the hips. Oh, boy. Uh -uh. All right, nobody cares about my moves. But everybody cares about Von Miller's moves as thousands marched past our camera. It didn't take long to see this march for science. The nation is stepping up to the president. Was in your face politics. The Green Party will put you on the ballot. And of course, with that comes attacks on political figures. One group calling our governor, dubbing him the name John Frackenlooper. And you guessed it, President Trump's name came up plenty. He hasn't done anything that he had, he had promised during the election, so he is letting his own base down. These ralliers not happy with the Trump administration's stance on climate change. That is what this is all about. President Trump sent out a statement on this Earth Day, keeping with his theme. Bringing back our jobs. Saying in part, we can and must protect our environment without harming America's working families. Without clean water, without clean air, jobs don't mean crap. Why didn't you do this eight years ago? Why now? Because now we have people that are in, in office. You're trying to gut the EPA. You're trying to gut the NIH. Should this be a political issue? Or is, it, or is it bigger than that? As far as understanding data, reproducing results, reviewing uh, results, I don't think that should ever be politicized. Everywhere you go, there's a different sign like this one here, stand up for science. And then you walk a few more feet and you stumble on a sign like this that says, make Earth great again. And some signs, well, they're just meant to make you laugh. Nerds of the world unite. You got to decide. Whether it's through song or a catchy phrase, science, not silence. free speech is at work yet again. Our entire way of life. But this time, many who keep to themselves in a science lab, I am a scientist, are protecting what they hold dear. These are the people that are actually doing that work. I'm downtown. Eric Lou for Denver 7. Today is Thursday, March 20th. When Molly Wright first made this video for her mom two years ago, no one imagined it would be the only way to hear her voice today. That same young, beautiful woman with a promising future silenced, fighting for every breath now. I realize now you never want to get a call from a chaplain from a hospital. They told us that our daughter was in an accident on January 30th, Molly and her boyfriend Jeremy were driving over Kenosha Pass in a snowstorm when their car was hit by a truck. Then something happened. Call it fate, call it coincidence, but something happened on this road that saved Molly's life. I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know what I was going to see. On this road, Henry Rodriguez would become a hero. Literally, the left side of the car, the driver's side, 
was scrap metal. So I ran around uh, the passenger side and uh, Molly was there. Uh, she was tucked on the floorboard of the passenger seat. So Henry, a complete stranger who was only in Colorado on vacation, stumbled on the accident, pulled Molly out of the car just the right way, and performed CPR until he revived her. It's been more than three months now. Henry and his wife Brittany are back in Colorado from Texas to see Molly for the first time since the accident. Hello, Molly. We're just happy to be here. We're happy we're able to see you. Molly is alert, her eyes are open, but she can't talk. Her spine now fused together after doctors say she was internally decapitated. Remarkably, doctors are hopeful she'll make a full recovery. You just keep fighting and you're gonna be back 100%. Molly's hero isn't here to keep her alive anymore. He's here to encourage her to fight. It's not about me, it's about Molly. And we want, we want Molly to get better, and, uh, and we believe she will. Molly's boyfriend, Jeremy, by her side every day, grateful for the man across from him on this day. He did CPR on her for 45 minutes, and a lot of other people might have given up at that point. On the other side of the glass, it looks grim. But for this family, these machines are a sign of life, a sign of hope and promise. I hope she hears that there's a bright future in front of her, and that she can be all of the things she was, all of the things she dreams to be, all the things she hoped to be. I hope she understands that. The selfie is pretty popular on Instagram, but what if you could go further, sharing your hobby, or even better, sharing your love for photography? These three photographers have at least two things in common. An eye for photography and a knack for upping their followers. They have close to 50,000 fans between the three of them. How about that? Those fans waiting for the next Colorado beauty shot. There's so much diverse landscape in Colorado that you really can't get bored with anything. Angela Vega Fields is a Colorado native. Taking pictures is just a hobby of hers. Really, I utilize it just, just to share what I enjoy and what my passion is. And if people like it, great. You know, not for everyone, which is fine. So what's the secret to becoming a big-time Instagrammer? Austin Cameron Smith, who moved to Colorado from Atlanta, says there's a process to it. A lot of marketing and reaching out to people doing the same thing. You do that through hashtags. You do that through finding other communities and, and, and reaching out to them. And it certainly helps when you know how to take a good photo. And for Brandon Tormanen, getting that perfect Colorado shot isn't always easy. You know, it's a beautiful place to live, but at the same time, you got to work for it for a lot of the locations here, which is nice. And the beauty of social media, being able to share your passion. Be yourself, you know? Take whatever your craft is and perfect it. What I enjoy taking pictures of, hopefully people enjoy seeing it. I'm Eric Lufer for the Now Denver.